What's going on guys, Root at NullShell.com here today, and we're looking at even more Python today. Uh, today we're continuing off of our little conditional statements adventure journey extravaganza, and uh, today we're going to check out some logical operators. Now, logical operators are kind of exactly what they sound like. They help us decide and make decisions that make sense or are sort of logical. So we do this when we're testing in conditional statements with like things like and or or and not and that sort of things. So and can let us like test for multiple and and or let us understand and look at multiple expressions or multiple conditions and try and try and treat them as one. Almost like sometimes you might be able to consider it like if you're nesting conditional statements too that's kind of part of it. But with uh, logical operators when you're using them in conjunction with one like one big condition with like small subparts of it it's a little bit linear and I feel like sometimes it's not as precise because you can't you can't really error check sometimes if you are if you're combining two things together but hey let's give it a look uh, I'm gonna open up idle and I'm going to open up the previous email uh, little thing that we've been working on lately that la the one that we the little project little program whatever you want to call it that we made just last tutorial because what we're gonna do here is I want to try and almost I don't know the correct word for it, but I'm thinking we'll just minimize it, optimize it. I don't think it'll be optimizing because we're not really making anything different. We're just sort of exploring this idea in a different way, if that makes sense. So I'm going to copy this function here, the, uh, the e if the email is valid function, and we're going to mix if the and symbol is in the email and the dot symbol in the email. So we're going to use that logical operator and. And if you look over here in that effects table, it's the condition, the entire condition will evaluate the true if both expressions are true. So in this case, we're trying to look for the, uh, the at symbol and the dot. So when we do and, we will have uh, a new one here, and in email. So now we can kill this line because it's going to be one here and we can have an else. We can have... If that doesn't work, then, uh... Else. Actually, no. You don't want to display out on the screen. This email does not look valid to me. And then we will return false. So we're doing practically the same thing we did in those other else statements, but it's been shortened by a great deal because we're sort of combining these things. But the thing is you can't test whether you can't find the at symbol or you can't find the period. Since they're combined into one expression, I suppose you could do it once more by checking individually whether the and symbol or the dot symbol, but that's kind of doing the exact same thing as we just previously did in the nesting statements. So maybe it's a good idea to use this 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 uh this broad condition, whether the and symbol, the at symbol and the period are in the email, and then breaking it down once more into the and, if the at symbol is in there, and then you have another if statement for if the dot symbol is in there, so you just have a whole nother if code block. And that might be a little bit hectic, I don't know. It's, it's whatever you as the programmer feel like you want, feel like you want to put that much effort in. But this is, this is what it, it'll do, it's checking for both the at symbol and the period. So let's try and run it. Let's see what it'll do. If we please enter an email, let's say, uh, let's say root. That email doesn't look valid to me. Let's try it again. Let's do root at null shell. Now see, it doesn't look valid to you again, but if we ran it last time, it'll give us a notification that, hey, we just can't find the period. But in this case, we don't know whether it's the period or the at symbol that we can't find. If we type in root at null shell dot com, the email looks valid because we found both the at symbol and the period. Okay, okay, so now we've been using the AND keyword in conjunction. So what if we change it to OR? What if we change it to OR, so if we find one of these, then it'll evaluate to true. But in that case, it's going to have only one of them, but we don't want that. What if we did NOT? If NOT, so if it didn't find either one of these, if it didn't find this one or that one, it'll we should reverse the if and the conditional statements. We can change this down here in the else to the correct finding and this one up at the top 
to the bad finding. So we'll try and run that. <coughs> root. We'll try it again. Root at null shell. Okay. See, I hadn't thought this through entirely the way I looked at it, because it might be singling out one or more. I have not sat down and actually tried to figure out how the logic would work in this scenario. But if we try it, root at nullshell.com, because it's found one, it looks like it will still be able to consider this correct, because we have that or in there. So what if we did if not and, so if it finds these, if if it does find these both in there, the at symbol and the period, that's correct. So if not, it'll display the bad thing, and if it is, it'll display the good thing. So using or in this case wouldn't really make a lot of sense, but I'm sure you guys can understand that idea if one of these is correct, this or that. So I don't I feel like I don't have to run through that idea for you, and you can you can figure out the syntax of course by yourself. But not is a, is a little interesting in the way where in like where it should be. You can't have it not you can't have not inside the parentheses. At least I don't think you can. It's worth a try. Let's give it a go. Okay. It's still working. So There you go. You and I both learned something new today. <laughs> if we go into root at nullshell.com, that looks good. We try it again. It's just your root. Email looks valid. Huh. That's it's interesting. What if we try it not? In a completely different case. Because it might be not this and that. It might be considering this as one expression. Because if we had the not in here like we did just a moment ago, that might treat it as an or because it's only singling out one. Let's try it. Email doesn't look valid. If we do it again, root at nullshell.com, email looks valid. Root at nullshell. Email does not look valid, but yeah, it does depend on where the not is inside the syntax. That's a little tough. That might be a little tough to understand and figure out. Huh. I'm sorry. Whoops. I'm going to have to run that again. Root at null shell. Because it's not finding that other one. So yeah, you can combine these logical operators to become, to make a real huge fluster cuck and not have any idea what you're doing like I'm sort of doing right now. But when you try and think it through, you should be able to determine the simplest way to test these variables. I myself prefer nesting these because it's just so, it's just so drawn out and you can test for both scenarios. I don't see the dot, I don't see the at symbol. In this one, you can't tell. It's, it's, it's shorter, it's faster, I suppose, but at the same time, just understanding this might be a little tough. So, it's it's more of a personal choice. I feel like you can use logical operators and then nest after that, so, so you have, like, that general specific theme. You're, like, zoom, you're zooming in on the project, on the problem, whatever you want to call it, so, yeah. But... There's my little run-through for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this one was a little tough to wrap your head around, but if you keep watching the first portion of the video, you might be able to understand it. Because and and or are simple to understand if they're in the right context. But if you screw around with them too much, you'll just... All you'll do is lose yourself inside a labyrinth, so... Thank you guys for watching, though. Thank you for listening. Uh, I really love having you guys in the audience. Uh, please give me a like. Maybe leave a comment. Maybe subscribe. I don't know. It's, it's really whatever you feel generous enough to do today. So uh, have a great day, guys. Goodbye.